Okay guys, this is like the 90th time that I've tried this. Hopefully it works this time. I wanted to explain a little bit more about functions because I think that there are some conceptual difficulties that for some of you guys are turning into roadblocks that are making it hard for you to progress on the assignment. So hopefully what I talk about here will clear up some really important aspects of what functions are and you'll be able to uh, move forward a little bit more easily. Okay, so part one, the relationship between the name and the return value of the function. Spoiler alert, there is no intrinsic relationship. We try to give names to functions that make sense, but they don't have to be related to each other, the return value and the name. And one way to think about this maybe is, um, to forget what I said earlier about a function being a variable. That is true, but that is maybe not helpful. It might be more helpful to think about a function as a piece of technology that you are building to perform some kind of a function, a tiny little robot. So here I am, I have built a function, I've built a robot, and the, the, uh, the thing that I want the robot to do is to clean my room. Why did I need this function? Because my room is a mess. And so I'm hoping that this piece of technology will help me to keep my room cleaner. And in fact, it seems to do so. Every time I call the robot cleaner, it gives as output, I cleaned your room. So if we just look at the structure real quick, we can see here's the function. It has a name, robot cleaner. We define a variable in the function scope and set it equal to the string, I cleaned your room. And then we, ret we return that output. And we can tell that's happening if we declare another variable, a, set it equal to the output of robot cleaner. And then just type a, if you were using Quokka in Visual Studio Code, you would then see that the, the value is I cleaned your room. You could also um, just send the value of the variable to the console and that would give you the string I cleaned your room. And now uh, we can name it whatever we want and the return value is going to be what we get back. And the reason we make a function here is because I'm going to want to clean my room more than once. For instance, I might want to do it every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Uh, and then I can loop through um, uh, an array Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and for every day of Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I can run the the um, the function robot cleaner, and my room will be cleaned three times. You, right now, it's four because we have it logging four times, but there, now it's three times. Uh, so whenever you need this function done, you call the name of the function by typing its name and then parentheses and usually the parameter inside it. Okay. Uh, the name and the return value are n not the same. What matters, in, what, what gives the return value to the function is the stuff that's inside it. So if somebody comes into my room at night and uh, takes my robot cleaner apart and puts something else inside, then maybe it won't clean my room anymore. So for instance, if a Russian spy from a 1980s movie uh, snuck into my room and sabotaged my robot cleaner, instead of saying, I cleaned your room, it might instead say, ha ha, I have replaced your robot cleaner. Now your room is even messier. ha <laughs> Right? And then we could see that the result of running robot cleaner would be to make my room messier instead of cleaner. And if I, again, uh, ran this um, this loop across the elements of an array, we would uh, just have my room get messier and messier and messier over the course of the week. So again, no intrinsic relationship between name and return value. Don't get confused and somehow try to modify the function call to, to modify the return value. If you want to pass the assignment, you have to modify the inside of the function so that it always returns the right value. Okay, that was conceptual issue number one. Conceptual issue number two, the relationship not between name and output or, name or return value, but between parameter and output or return value. So 
When you write a function, first of all, if it's not a completely stupid primitive function uh, like like robot cleaner, it will have a parameter. And we don't, we only write those robot cleaner style functions uh, very rarely when um, you know, we, there are rare circumstances. In general, a function takes a parameter and transforms it to produce the output. And we can see why we would uh, want it to do so. So, for instance, I have a function here great writer, which takes one parameter name. <clears throat> we set the output equal to Margaret Abbott was a great writer, and then we return the output. And if we run great writer of Margaret Atwood with Margaret the string Margaret Atwood as the parameter, it works just as we expect and produce, uh, gives us a, a sentence, Margaret Atwood was a great writer as the output. If, however, we run it with uh, uh, Toni Morrison, as a parameter, it still gives us the sentence, Margaret Abbott was a great writer. That is probably not what we want. So instead, the solution is to not use a statically defined string as your output and instead to make use of the parameter in constructing the output. So if we look at this new function, even greater writer, which also takes a parameter name, uh, we construct the output string, which is going to be returned here in the second line, but in the first line, we construct the string by combining the parameter name with the static string was a great writer. And then when we run con uh, even greater writer of Margaret Atwood, the output is exactly what we expect. Margaret Atwood was a great writer. And when we use Toni Morrison as our parameter, we also get the expected output, which is that Toni Morrison was a great writer. This is still a really dumb function, and the functions, some of the functions that you write have to be a little bit smarter. So for instance, if I write Donald Trump, it gives us the false statement that Donald Trump was a great writer. So you're going to have to, uh, when, you, when you construct functions, sometimes you have to protect against poorly uh, uh, constructed or structured um, and parameter strings or, or parameter values. Okay, so two lessons. One, the name and the return value are completely separate, even if we mnemonically sometimes keep them somewhat similar. Two, the output should be constructed in a way that makes use of the parameters. Otherwise, uh, you, you're unlikely to get the results that you want when you pass a given parameter to the function. Okay, I hope that helps, and happy snow day. It is now officially a snow day. by combining the parameter name with the static string was a great writer. And then when we run con uh, even greater writer of Margaret Atwood, the output is exactly what we expect. Margaret Atwood was a great writer. And when we use Toni Morrison as our parameter, we also get the expected output, which is that Toni Morrison was a great writer. This is still a really dumb function. And the functions, some of the functions that you write have to be a little bit smarter. So for instance, if I write Donald Trump, it gives us the false statement that Donald Trump was a great writer. So you're going to have to, uh, when, you, when you construct functions, sometimes you have to protect against poorly uh, uh, constructed or structured um, parameter strings or, or parameter values. Okay, so two lessons. One, the name and the return value are completely separate. 
even if we mnemonically sometimes keep them somewhat similar. Two, the output should be constructed in a way that makes use of the parameters. Otherwise, uh, you, you're unlikely to get the results that you want when you pass a given parameter to the function. Okay, I hope that helps, and happy snow day. It is now officially a snow day.